What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Clams. I'm Will, and I am on the North Shore of Long Island. It is just the start of fall here, and uh, two nights ago, this boat behind me, the James Joseph, uh, they went out two, two nights ago and they smashed bluefish and bass. Uh, they went out again last night, slowed down a little bit, so we're going to go out again tonight. The, uh, it's not the optimal tide, but we're going to give it a shot anyway. I just, need, I just need one fish and really just the head and the collar of one fish. So even if I don't catch anything on the boat today, I got a pretty good feeling I can get my, uh, my head and collar. Um, I want to do a, uh, uh, you can't talk about the recipe until you have the fish, right? Can't do that. That's a jinx. But uh, yeah, it should be pretty good. We're just going jigging. We're not doing any bait fishing. So just diamond jigs. And uh, we're going to head out here probably in about 20 minutes. So real quick before, uh, before we get on the boat, it's a little bit hard to film on the boat because there's a lot of people on there. Some people play music. There's a lot of people cursing. It's, uh, it's a little bit rough. But before we get on the boat, so we're going for bluefish and striped bass. So bluefish have no regulation on size. You're allowed three per person um, and season is open. And then uh, striped bass, season is open, but there is a slot size between 28 and 31 inches. Um, they just made that regulation this year and they are, uh, I believe, one per person. So they're a little bit trickier. Um, you have more of a chance of catching a bluefish on the diamond jig, but there's usually a couple of bass uh, mixed in there. And uh, that's pretty much it for regulations. If anything, cool comes up over the side we'll talk about it we'll talk about it when we're off the boat <laughs> I don't really like filming while on the boat people look at you like you're crazy but um, we're heading out we're heading out now so fingers crossed best part of every fishing trip, the Italian sub. All right, so this time of year, the bluefish, they're in a little bit deeper water. So we're headed to, I think I said it before, but like 60, 80 feet, um, try to jig them up. But can you, can you guys tell where the fish are? You got this area here, no boat. And then this area over here, you got, every boat known to man over there so my my guess is that's where the fish are <laughs> so we're headed over there and uh we should be there in about 10 minutes had one little hit oh. Oh. one in the boat all right, there is one down there. So what do we got? One net, one stick, one fish. Yeah. Gonna be a hell of a pool. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> So running out of light, as you can see. A um, couple of fish on the boat, so I think if we don't get one in the next couple of drifts, we will be collecting heads and collars, which I'm all right with. Back at the house 
Um, it's dark out as you can see. So pretty, pretty rough fishing trip. Um, that was a full charter, man, and they put four fish on the boat. And like I said, Sunday night, they smashed them. Last night, slowed down a little bit. And I had a feeling tonight was going to be the way it was. But here's the thing. When you cook the things that other people throw away, as long as somebody on the boat catches something, I'm going to be okay. So I have two bluefish heads here. And I just want to show you, I uh, pulled the gills out of the heads. I took two of the two of the smaller ones and then over here, hang on, we'll take a walk over here. We have the beginning of a brine, so I have peppercorns, salt, some bay leaves and brown sugar. I'm going to add water to that and bring that up to a boil. Once it comes up to a boil, let it cool down completely till it's cold, pour it over the fish and they will sit until tomorrow. And then tomorrow, we're gonna smoke them and we are going to make smoked fish hash for breakfast. All right, got some ice cubes in there. It's nice and cool. Got our fish heads here. into the fridge. All right, it is a beautiful day out. I mean, look at this. Not a cloud in the sky. It is gorgeous for, uh, for it being fall, it's pretty amazing. Um, so I'm gonna start a barbecue uh, to get a little bit of smoky flavor on the fish. So what I'm gonna do is light the coals, push them all to one side, and then put the fish heads on the other side, and it'll go low and slow, but not too much. Might take about 40 minutes to cook them. I'm gonna start the fire. You've seen in other episodes with uh, Starter King, and I'll hold that up there. So if you want to, use your phone, put it on the camera setting, and that'll give you a link to go to their website. And um, in the description, you can use my code, for a bit of a discount as well. Um, really love this company, and I'm gonna tell you why. What they're using is byproduct, just like we are today for our fish. Um, it is a wax paper company for food, and then all of the clippings and everything else that would just get thrown away, they've pressed into fire starters. So they're doing a really cool thing. Um, so I'm happy to happy to help them out on the channel. So let's get the barbecue started. Fish heads are pulled out, taken out of the brine, and uh, let's get this started. So again, if you need that code, I don't know if it showed up uh, well enough, but that should work, I think. Let me know in the comments if that works. You just point your camera at it. I'm new to these things. So all of my coals are pushed to that side and we are going to put the fish heads on this side. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We got critics, critics over here. All right, the other thing I have is a poblano pepper. I am going to put that directly over the coals. And now this, we are going to cover. And that is going to ride for at least an hour. I might pull that pepper sooner once it's cooked through. Let me show you, let me show you who's making all this noise. This is Roxy and Cleo. What are you guys doing? <laughs> what are you doing over here? <laughs> so, 
<laughs> Just so you know, my mother has gotten the two of them into a habit. She gives them bones. So they go absolutely nuts around this time until she comes out with a bone. So we might have, we might have to placate them. But let's get the rest of the stuff started so that it's ready to go once the uh, fish heads are ready to pick. So for the potatoes for the hash, I'm using Yukon Golds. They have a bit of a lower um, moisture point in them, so you'll get a crispier potato. But we're gonna grate these into water to pull out some of that starch and keep them from oxidizing before we're ready to use them. You know, it wouldn't be a video on Long Island if there wasn't people doing yard work constantly. I don't know that I've ever made a video here without somebody running a leaf blower. It is amazing. 24 hour lawn care. And I did uh, skin and all on that. You know, I think we only need one. Yeah. Might do the one other smaller one, but eh, actually that's plenty. Okay, so we put this aside for the entire time that the uh, that the fish is also cooking. We'll let that soak, and then just chop up some uh, white onion. And we want this very thin, very small dice. Probably about half. So a very fine dice on that. Okay, put that aside and let's go check on our poblano pepper. All right, ooh, nice. We're getting there. This is good, I can peel the skin off. I don't mind the skin too much, so. We're not gonna cook that too much more. And these are looking good. Looking juicy. Get these a little flip. Ooh. That is already falling apart, which is a good thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness gracious. Okay, we're gonna give those maybe uh, just a couple of more minutes. We're gonna pull this guy off, peel the skin off of there, some of it anyway, and we will give these just a little more time. Not much though, that is pretty close to done. Let's see. Oh yeah, we are done. So we're going to pull these off and let them completely cool down. There we go. And pick all the meat. So while our fish heads are cooling down, I actually want to pull our potato potatoes out, which have been soaking. So we are going to squeeze all the moisture out of those. Then put them onto a paper towel to draw more moisture out. And one of the things that you could do is uh, put another paper towel on top and you take a big book and press down to squeeze out any remaining moisture. Now comes the fun part of picking. Ooh, man. Pull the head meat out there. Oh, man. This actually smells very, very smoky. Having the lid on there and having it cooked that way. And it cooked fast, but it took on a lot of the smoke. So I think we are going to have very tasty 
bluefish hash. And this is just cooked through because we're going to mix this into the potatoes and the uh, onion and everything else and then pan sear it to get those potatoes cr uh, crispy. So we don't want this overcooked. Just cooked through, which is exactly what it is. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> always amazed at how much fish comes out. And that this was going to the garbage. See, if you if you eat the part that nobody eats, the trick is you'll never get skunked. <laughs> These collars are amazing on their own. I mean, you could just barbecue them and eat them as is. They're pretty phenomenal. Make sure no bones in there. And the other cheek. Oh, <laughs> that is beautiful. And the rest of the head meat on that side. All right, you get the idea. I'm gonna do this second one here. Let's uh, mix up our hash. Give the potatoes one last squeeze. Try to get as much moisture out as possible because the fish has moisture and our onions have moisture. So in go our potatoes, in go our onion. Now the pepper I'm saving because I am going to uh, just slice it up and put it on top after I after I peel the skin off as you see, just like that. I don't have to show you guys that, but yeah, that's for later. Okay, so we have a little bit of cayenne pepper, a little bit of chili powder, some white pepper, some black pepper, a little bit of sea salt. Some garlic powder. Yep. I'm not even in Key West and it's sticking. Now the only reason I'm not putting actual garlic in there is because as we're trying to get those potatoes crispy, the garlic runs the chance of, uh, of burning and making everything bitter. So now mix everything up. Good time to make sure there's no bones in there. I'm not really trying to break that fish up. I want it to stay nice, nice chunks. Man, this smells good. All right, this is looking ready for the pan. So I want this pretty low medium heat because uh, I don't want anything to burn. I want to make sure that I can get those potatoes crispy. So not too hot. Add some olive oil. And to help in the non-stick department, we will add a little bit of butter. got some some crispies happening on the side here a 
All right, we're ready to do some flipping here. Just a section at a time. Oh, yeah. That is a beautiful golden brown. I think we can add a little bit of heat to it while it finishes cooking. All right, I don't even want to tell you what just happened. <laughs> I ran out of uh, butane in the middle of cooking this and had to run to uh, Home Depot real quick to grab another one, but we're back in business. All right, so I'm gonna give this one last stir. Another flip just to make sure that all of our potatoes are cooked. The smell on this, man, it's good. <laughs> it's really good. Just a touch more oil. Make sure we don't stick. And you could throw a cover on top of this to, uh, to make sure that those potatoes cook through, but I also want some of the moisture from those onions and everything else to uh, evaporate and come out so that we can get these little little crispy parts. Because those are the best parts. All right, one last flip here. Oh, yeah. That is looking good. So good. Okay, our potatoes are definitely cooked through. Now, I'm gonna swap out pans here. Put this on a low heat, and we're gonna fry an egg for on top of our, our bluefish hash. We shut that heat off. Now let's plate up. All right, and we have our cooked poblanos and some scallions. A little more scallion, come on. Now if that isn't pretty, I don't know what is. Alright, let's dig in. Hey. If you're a fan of corned beef hash, this this is unbeatable. Only thing I'm missing right now, which I'm gonna run inside and grab, just a little bit of hot sauce. That is it. But this is... Smoky. A little bit of texture from the crispy parts in there. That fish is not dried out because we brined it. That egg is cooked perfect. Mmm. <laughs> you know what? For not catching a fish, this is a pretty good breakfast. Uh -huh. <laughs> Alright guys. <clears throat> I do want to say big, big thank you to the James Joseph, Captain Jim, Jim Schneider, his son James Schneider. Now here's the thing, you could look at that video and be like, oh man, they didn't catch fish. I want to tell you something, there were 25 boats out there, maybe even 30. Not one fish came up over the side on any of those boats. 
and Jim probably spent more in gas than what he got from having everybody on the boat. And we still managed on a night that fish were not biting at all, we managed to put four fish in the boat. Now, yeah, that's not a crazy number, but for a night where he went from spot to spot to spot to spot, and to give you an idea, you got 50 people with lines in the water and only four came up, that's a rough night, but not one other boat. The James Joseph will always find you the fish or they will burn all the gas they have looking for it to get you one. But, uh, and then if you're like me, you never get skunked as long as someone on the boat catches something. <laughs> but I am going to enjoy this and start my day. Thanks for coming along on the adventure. I uh, got a couple more coming from uh, Long Island and then we're headed back down to the Keys. I know you guys like the Keys episodes, so Aaron and I got some fun stuff planned. So we'll see you on the next one.